Today, scripture is a bit long, so read along in your pew Bibles if you'd like, or just sit back and listen to this very familiar story of Job. There once was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. His sons used to go and hold feast in one another's houses to turn, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the feast days had run their course, Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This is what Job always did. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser stood among them. The Lord said to the accuser, Where have you come from? The accuser answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking all around it. The Lord said to the accuser, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on all the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then the accuser answered the Lord, Does Job fear for nothing? Have you not put a fence around him and his house? and all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out now your hand, and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to the accuser, Very well, all that he has is in your power. Only do not stretch out your hand against him. So the accuser went out from the presence of the Lord. One day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell on them and carried them off and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I have alone escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, made a raid on the camels and carried them off and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came across the desert, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people and they are all dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshiped. He said, naked I have come from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all of this, Job did not send or charge God with any wrongdoing. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser also came among them to present himself. The Lord said to the accuser, Where have you come from? 
The accuser answered the Lord, from going to and fro on earth and from walking up and down all around it. The Lord said to the accuser, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on all the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then the accuser answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that the man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your very face. The Lord said to the accuser, very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So the accuser went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot shirt with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive good from God? and not also receive evil? My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I am unbelievably glad that I am here today in front of you. You know, what got me here is really a series of unfortunate events through my life. I have made a lot of dubious choices getting me to here, you know? And yet, I thank God today that I am here in front of you. Now, I don't take and say, why did you make me make that decision? I am blaming you. You know, it's easy to thank God when everything goes well. It's easy too to blame God when things don't go well but is that really the way that we should do it throughout life you hear people say well how would God let like an atrocity happen how does good things how do they happen to bad people or bad things happen to good people where is the easiest place to see it in the Bible I chose Job today because I wanted Stephen to have to read something that lasted like 10 minutes long. (laughs) It goes on a long way after that. That's not where it ends. A lot of things happen to Job. And I'm not sure that's really the place to answer the question that I'm asking today. And that is actually the name is, you know, with me, God is with me. And then why me? With me, why me? I'm not sure that Job is really that place. Job has a lot of ambiguity, I would say. I mean, it's us. Good things happen to us. Bad things happen to us. A couple of weeks ago, I flew up to Boston. I had to be with a friend whose wife was in the hospital. I went up there and I rented a car and drove it back. Whew. Oh, that was one of those dubious decisions one of those foolish decisions i will go on record today as saying the people of boston and that northeastern corridor are the worst drivers on this planet they do not use a blinker because that person that they're trying to come over will speed up it's like it's like a yellow light it doesn't mean slow down and be cautious you know people in general have trouble following rules We all do. Case in point, Adam and Eve. I mean, they're living in paradise. It can't get better. They have one rule. One rule. Don't eat from that tree. 
All right, you know what happens. I mean, they get cast out, there's fratricide, there's all sorts of things going on. It's all bad. I mean, it is not good what happens. Now, when I was in college, yeah, I'll take that road and drive all around. When I was in college, I took a semester of Milton's Paradise Lost. Milton's Paradise Lost. If you don't know Milton's Paradise Lost, Milton, unbelievably, 1600s, late 17th century, he had read or had, had had the book read to him, every book published. He had read every book that had been published. And he took that information and decided to tell us about Genesis. And that's what he does. And lots of the things that we think of from the Bible aren't really from the Bible. They're from sort of Milton's way of looking at the Bible. And Milton said one thing. Now, when I looked in the, I was hoping to come up with these just really sweet things of information. I'm looking in the margins of this book and it is filled with my like scribbling, 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 information, information. I didn't understand a bit of it. I mean, it has been a long time, but it made no sense. But the one thing that I walk away with is Milton believed that God had created us perfect. We were perfect. And that meant to Milton that we had the ability to choose between right and wrong. We have that ability. And we know the difference. And without any interference from God, we can make that choice. We can make the choice. No interference from God. And I'll say, and I'm getting ahead of myself, unless we ask for it. Unless we ask for God to give us that help. Unless we open our hearts to God giving us the answer. And that's really sort of the crux of what I'm talking about here. We can make our own decision. We can choose between right and wrong. And God does not have to interfere with that. Thought. But we want God to interfere with us because well hopefully that's why we're all here that's why we've all come here to open our hearts because if everyone in this room has opened their hearts to God think of the good that can come out of this situation think of all the good that can come from us opening our hearts and helping other people. We can always go, oh gosh, that person is the luckiest person on the earth. How did they get that? Why do they have that? Everybody can find somebody that has more than they do, unless they're like a mega billionaire that permeates our social media. I can, I can think of a couple of them that are billion and billion and they probably can't find people that have less than them but certainly if we look beyond that which we can see if we look beyond that which we can see because I can see you but if I look beyond that do they really have more than Bezos do they really have oh didn't mean to say his name do they really have more than those people I I, I think not so how is it possible that God lets atrocities happen. How is that possible? And that part of Job there that Stephen actually read says it. How is it possible to thank God for the good things that happen to us without thanking God for the bad things that happen to us? Because my God doesn't interfere unless I ask God to interfere. God is there for us all the time. But in that being there all the time, God has to let us make mistakes, has to let us make mistakes, or the world would be all good. I mean, all good. If you've seen The Matrix, you know that doesn't work. You know, people have to want, people have to need, people have to strive, people have to want 
to open their hearts to God. And I hope we can all do that. Brother Sam's all the way upstairs. I usually turn to Brother Sam, I'll turn to David here, and say, do you think that's enough? <laughs> because Brother Sam usually says, yes, that, that's enough. So, say what? Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think with the, the long read there, I think we've got, I, I, I didn't mean to try to answer the question today. I didn't try to answer the question of why does God let things bad happen. What I hoped I did was to get you to perhaps open Job, to open the Bible, because the answers are in there. I cannot, in an 11 minute sermon, tell you the answer to that question, but you can find it. If you open your heart, open the book, and actually, Job's easy to find. If you take the Bible and open it halfway through, let it drop. Good grief, right there, Psalms. Psalms is right there. All those cool things that we know that David wrote, that we can sing to and whatnot. You go back a little bit. What's right there before Psalms? Job. Even educators said that it was the greatest story ever written. Really? I mean, it is amazing. The way that it's structured and over its time period, the way that it has changed. I hope I have fired you up, have lit a spark, so that you will grab that Bible and actually read it. Because there is so much in it that is fantastic. Amen? Amen. Amen.